your professor has asked you to make a video for a class assignment. The assignment centers around the content or the marketing of the video you will be making and not the video production process itself. This video provides some general tips to help you make your video. Meet with your group and look at videos that were made by students in previous sections of the course. Get a feel for what has worked in the past and brainstorm ideas for your video. One option is to make a music video using a current hit single, but students don't usually own the rights nor have permission to republish the song they wish to use. YouTube might strip the audio from your video or refuse to publish your music video altogether. Ask your professor ahead of time about whether you are allowed to use copyrighted music in your video. Let everyone's voice be heard during the group meeting and make sure that everyone is on board with the idea you eventually decide to run with. Also during that meeting, brainstorm the types of shots you want to get for the video. Pool your resources to see who has the best camera to use to create your group's video. A cell phone with a built-in video camera might be fine to use, but if someone has a Sony Handycam, it's probably best to use the Handycam. Use the camera with the best image quality and the one that has the easiest method of transferring video footage to the computer for editing later. On the day of the video shoot, prepare your camera by adjusting white balance, focus, and iris. You may want to put them on the auto settings. Follow your camera's instruction manual to adjust the settings in order to get the best possible picture. You may be surprised to find that even an inexpensive consumer camera has manual settings and by using manual white balance, focus, and iris, you could get a better image than by leaving them set to auto. Position your subjects carefully and consider shooting the video outside if it is a nice day. This will add production value to your video. In most cases, the outside of a campus building is more visually appealing than the rooms inside. Avoid shooting your subject with the sun directly in front of or behind him or her. Get an establishing shot of all your subjects from a distance so that you can give a sense of location. Then go in tighter for medium shots and close-ups. Put the camera on a tripod or a makeshift camera mount. This way you can avoid that wobbly unintended camera movement that will make your video look amateurish. A concrete pillar or a stack of books on a table is a good makeshift mount. After pressing the record button, remove your hands from the camera so that the shot is even steadier. If you want to use any dialogue or natural sound from your video shoot, try to get that audio when you are in close-up. Most consumer cameras have poor audio capabilities, and the closer you are to a subject, the better audio you will get. Try to get more than one take of each shot. This way you will have a safety just in case there are unforeseen problems with the first take, such as poor framing, audio mistakes, or if the first video file becomes corrupted. Avoid zooming the camera lens. It's better to physically move closer to your subject instead of zooming. Shoot different types of shots and angles, not just the obvious shot from the front of the subject. You could do a high angle of your subject, a very low angle, or a side angle. Consider getting extreme close-ups of things such as the subject snapping his fingers, tapping her foot, or other actions that can be inserted into the video to add momentum and variety later on during editing. By now you have shot your video with a camera that uses SDHC memory cards or one that has a built-in hard drive like the Flipcam. A digital still camera that has a video function will work as well. The computers on your campus might not have memory card readers, so you will need to use the cord that came with the camera to transfer footage to the computer. Fortunately, most laptop computers do come with a built-in card reader, so consider using your personal laptop to edit the footage. Windows Live Movie Maker comes with Microsoft Windows and may already be on your laptop if you purchased your computer within the last few years. Transfer your video footage onto the computer you will be using and then bring it over to Windows Live Movie Maker or iMovie if you are using a Mac. Find Windows Live Movie Maker by typing it into the Windows search and then clicking on it. Then browse to find the footage you transferred onto your computer. Watch all of the footage and decide which shots you want to use. 
Remember, a shorter video is more likely to be watched in its entirety than a longer boring video. A short video is also more likely to be rewatched and shared with friends. Use only your best clips for your final video. You will be able to split clips, add effects, and change the audio using Movie Maker or iMovie. Bring headphones to the computer lab so that you are able to hear the audio you wish to edit, since there are no speakers on the computers in the university labs. There are video tutorials online to help you with specific questions you may have about iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. Click on the links on the description of this video to go to those tutorials. After you finish editing on the timeline, it's time to create your movie. You need to export it from the program so that you will then be able to upload it to YouTube. Go to Save Movie or to Share if using iMovie. Title your movie. Then log on to YouTube and upload your movie. Add any text and tags and then click Save All Changes so that YouTube applies those text changes to your movie. Click on the link that appears and your movie is live and published for all to see on the internet. You're finished! Now send the link to all your friends and your professor.